Okay, start for you. Okay, let's start the class. Last class, uh, we were talking about the group called the stereophytes. And what we remember is, whenever we talk about stereophytes, the plant body, or starting from the plant body, plant body to be as well as sporophytes, no? Sporophytes keep produce for you. They will produce the spores, the spores will germinate and germinate and ultimately they will produce what? They will produce the gametophytes, right? In case of stereophytes, the gametophytes were given a special name and what was the name? Protellus, right? Where would you find the protellus? In the yeah, sporophyte itself or in the soil? It's always in the soil, right? Talking about spores, we have also talked about two terms that is homosporous and heterosporous condition, right? Where more ma maximum of the pteridophytes are homosporous and heterosporous. Maximum of them are homosporous. Some of them, we have discussed about five of them, they are heterosporous, right? So we'll be talking from that point itself. As far as the rest of the information is concerned, we have already talked about the leaves called as sporophylls, tropophylls, right? We remember something called as vegetative leaves and reproductive leaves. Right? Then we have talked about a structure called as cone or strobili. Cone or strobili is a characteristic of certain types of pteridophytes only. Not necessarily all the pteridophytes will show the presence of cone or strobili. At a cone, yeah. If we are talking about a cone, what exactly a cone is? It is nothing but the aggregation of certain types of leaves, and these leaves are called as key. Sporophylls, right? Sporophylls will like combine for a compact structure at a form for a like What they form is a cone. And in that sporophyll, the sporangium is present. Inside the sporangium, the spores are present, right? Talking about the root stems, Ebla discussion already, Koriso. So we'll continue from that homosporous and heterosporous condition. Okay. What was the last point that we have written? Hmm? Protellus we have written. No? We have talked about that homosporous, heterosporous example.
Uh, I think this was uh, lines are clear. Take it up to clear, was it? Right? Hmm. Hmm. Form form plant Okay, so in heterosporous condition, we will see the development of microspore and the megaspore. Microspore, obviously, male gametophyte, or it is called as the male prothallus, and in case of uh, female gametophyte, it's called as the female prothallus. So, obviously, sex organs stackable. Entheridium, talking about the entheridium, how does the entheridium look like? It is a globular structure with or without stalk. What we understand by the word stalk is certain types of entheridium, they will have an extended number of cells that will form a stalk like structure. Right, that might be present or that might be absent also. Not a very important point, right? So when we talk about this entheridium, then we obviously jacket from bryophytes onwards, we have been talking about the presence of jacket. Jacket is absent in case of algae. 
except kara we have already talked about that point right so inside the ticket the amount of sales or the number of sales those sales are called as androcyte or they are also called as the spore mother cells they could be also referred to as such androcytes will have key form for the enterozoites what are the enterozoites the male gamete is called as the enterozoite right so jodi confusion hoga side of male gamete will be likhi doba talking about the enterozoite in deidophytes If you remember, we have already talked about how to study this chapter. Na? I said that we have to compare bryophytes to other theropods. So let's compare for every possible level. So we are comparing the enterozoites of bryophytes and that of the theropods. In case of bryophytes, if you remember, I mean, male gamete to what are they? About the shape and the number of flagella. Bryophytes or male gamete or shape ke ni kwa or number of flagella ke dal. It was comma shaped and it was biflagellate. Right, but in case of theropods, the words that we see is spiral and multiflagellate. So, it will put question ahi bo pare. Right, spiral and multiflagellate male gamete are the characteristic of which group of plants? Comma shaped and biflagellate male gamete is the characteristic of which group of plants? That is in case of bryophytes. But in spite of that, we have certain exceptions. And as we have already said, no, in this entire chapter or, or in this entire group of theropods, there are just two examples that we have to study in detail. So one is Selaginella, and the other is Fern. So many questions has been asked about Selaginella. So Selaginella male gamete kenifa biflagellate is the word that you have to remember. Right? Spindle shape to report the man question. Aha, na? Kid A word to report question. Aha, he said. Right? Man. Yes. No. Wow. ट Male gamete will be called by sperms will be called whatever you say, but generally we use the word enterozoid. Lower uh, examples by lower case of plants will occur. Then you can have a specific mitosis, meiosis, the whole thing is not necessary. They can ultimately convert itself into a uh, spore, or they can convert itself into a sperm, etc., etc. In this case, the enterozoite. Normally, before the formation of the gametes, the cells that were present inside the enterodium was called as endocytes. Endocytes gradually converted into what? Uh, enterozoites or the male gametes. Clear? Yes. Okay. Spiral or multi-flagellate monotrichia, biflagellate monotrichia. Can I have the board? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next, we have to write certain informations about the archegonium. Archegonium or information speaking. Yes, Talking about archegonium, we have already discussed the points. Talking about the structure, how does it look like? It looks like a flask, or it is a flask shape. structure the point to be remembered here is in case of theropods we see a structure that is inverted right in case of bryophytes ami ki dekhe sir flask right in case of theropods just the inverted structure structure ek ek ali inverted condition right next is the important point is about the number of neck canal cells i think you remember we have talked about the gradual evolution of plants the gradual disappearance of the archegonia Right, so gradually, the plant will advance. So when we talk about evolution, these structures called as enterodium and archegonium gradually disappears. Right, because that is the reason why, in case of angiosperms, we do not see the male reproductive structure as enterodium and the female reproductive structure as archegonium. Instead of that, he dekha pao. Pollen grain, right? Pollen grain dekha pao. We see that that ovary. Right, they don't have the enterodium and the archegonium. So, in case of lower plants, enterodium and archegonium was present. So, what happened to those two structures? Gradually, in the process of evolution, keyhole those got disappeared. Right, the number of cells started declining, and as a result, keyhole was to like yeah, keyhole. So, when we talk about this comparison, we have to talk about the number of neck canal cells also. So, in the group called as theropods, the more, most important characteristic is the number of neck canal cells is always confined to one. Now, when I say it's confined to one, not necessarily all the examples of theropods will have one neck canal cell. We are mainly concerned with Selaginella point of view, and so that is the explanation for Selaginella. 
So teratophytes kuli kuli selaginella and fern we have to study. So what is the number of neck canal cells in case of selaginella? It's one, right? <laughs> Next, since we have already talked about the male and the female reproductive organ, the male and the female uh, gametes, next is we have to talk about the process of fertilization. And the process of fertilization is exactly the same as we have discussed in case of bryophytes, right? If you remember, we have said their dependency on water. In case of bryophytes and teratophytes, until and unless water is present, fertilization won't take place because the male gamete has to swim towards the female gamete. Right? Our swim for a laggy lake, take a little funny to take a little laggy. JD, funny night, it all a fertilization will not take place. As far as swimming towards the female gamete is concerned, the male gamete reaching the archegonia, entering inside the archegonia. Archegonia are the cover cells, cover cells, but it's obvious that they will have cover cells also exactly in the same way as we have discussed in case of bryophytes. Right? So the process is the same. We have talked about something called as chemotexis. So exactly the same thing would happen in case of teratophytes also. When the entridium matures, what happens? The male gametes would be liberated and they would uh, they would start swimming in the water that is found nearby. As far as the archegonia is concerned, whenever the archegonia gets matured, it starts absorbing the surrounding water. And once it absorbs the water, a mucilaginous substance inside the archegonia gets formed. This mucilaginous substance oozes out from the archegonia, mixes with the surrounding water, and because of this chemical reaction, water plus that mucilaginous has contains, they will give a signal for the male gametes to enter inside the archegonia. This process we have discussed, the word that is important is chemodexis. So exactly the same thing that happens in case of teratophytes also. So that's the portion that we are not going to write it down. Taking from me, so no point, right? Next, some more points.
I think it's understood. Points, Pilla? If this is over, life cycle of period of ice heading Kuriba.
So if you talk about life cycle, it looks something like this. Explanation has already been done. The question is, this type of a life cycle could be seen in case of homosporous and heterosporous. Homosporous and enthidium or archegonium born on the same gametophyte, it is a homosporous condition. Our alternation of generation, the Kapam, we have the sporophytic generation and we have the gametophytic generation, and that is the reason why the life cycle is called as diploheplontic. We have the diploid phase, we have the haploid phase. If this is over, classification of theodophytes heading Koriba. Over. Hmm. Okay, the next is classification of pteridophytes. Pteridophytes have been classified under four classes, that is Thylopsida, Lycopsida, Spenopsida, and Pteropsida. From the classification point of view, no doubt the uh, note is quite long. Quite long, but not very long. So happy, but the point to study is not much, right? Kiki ta point kori me, kita moi tick kori dim. So those are the things that you will study. As far as from this section is concerned, questions kya hai? Have you heard something called as club moss and spike moss? <laughs> Club moss or spike moss. Who is called as a club moss and which is or which plant is called as a spike moss? It is a good question. I have. Right. Next is talking about this since the classes have been placed according to evolution. Lower uh, pteridophytes or higher pteridophytes. Lower pteridophytes ki hoa psilopsida or higher pteridophytes ki hoa pteropsida. Pteropsida example, teris. Bryopteris, marsalia, etc. etc. Teris, diopteris, marsalia. These are nothing but ferns, right? So ferns will be like a class of it will be always pteropsida. Remaining classes, sarvitorot, important, important examples ki di mon rakhi le hol. Thylopsida to iman questions are high ne. Talking about lycopsida, lycop, we understand it has a reference with lycopodium also. So two examples from this, lycopodium and selaginella. One is called as a club moss, one is called as a spike moss, right? Next from spenopsida side, we have just to remember one example that is equisitum. 
And whenever we talk about equisetum, first, what we need to know, they are also called as the horse tails. Second, they have silica, right? The hundred key or leaves by stem cells have silica deposit core, and so they are corrosive. Third is they are also responsible for forest fire. So these are the few points that we'll remember. Seropsida of man details are. So first we cast silopsida. So talking about the first one, Silopsida, uh, rootless, we understand dichotomously branched photosynthetic stem. Photosynthetic stem, we understand. Why is the stem photosynthetic? Because the next point, leaves are absent, right? So the leaves are absent, so photosynthetic stem. Dichotomously branched, dichotomous maniki, bifurcation, right? So adult stem, normally our stem will like any other, any other. Right? If suppose you go at the tip and then you bifurcate into two, this is what is called as dichotomously branched. Next is uh, talking about steely. Last class we have uh, spoken something about steely. So we know that steelal structure has started developing from the group called as pteridophytes. So once we talk about uh, evolution of steely, we'll have different different types of steelal structure. And the most primitive type of steely is protocele. Our most advanced type of steely, ectactocele, that is seen in case of angiosperms. In case of pteridophytes, the advances dictyocele. Since these are primitive plants, so obviously they will have the primitive type of steelar structure. Most more as we understand, only one living genus, only one living genus, in this class, gute plants will like kihobal, fossils, right? Just one of them are living, that is tylotum. Next is, we have certain types of fossil plants also in this group, rhydia and horneophyton. So, ketia pa, common fossil plants of what question to ahibo pa, pa tylotum, bakki bilak na lage. Next, we have the second one, lycopsida.
online students can you hear me can you see the board yes ma'am yes yes ma'am <clears throat> okay 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 just some moment so mai pe khud yana ki lage oi tu so what is important the word club moss we understand the word that is tropophyll right we understand the word that is sporophyll so it would ki thakibo tropophyll ut thakibo sporophyll ut thakibo and sporophylls will aggregate to form okay so if you are talking about a plant like this uh, formally let's draw selaginella
can say the diagram to aki lwa you might forget no so vegetative leaves are called as tropophylls sporophylls ki hoy the reproductive leaves are called as sporophylls sporophylls bila ke combine kori ki form kore cone form kore So in case of lycopsida, the leaves are microphyllous. What is microphyllous? Small, small leaves are called as microphyllous. Give an example of a teredophyte with uh, megaphyllous leaves. Give an example of a teredophyte with megaphyllous leaves. Ferns. Dango dango leaf cart hake. Ferns or koro koro leaf cart hake. Selaginella, lycopodium, etc. Right? Okay. Uh, Homospora, heterospora, both lycopodium. It's used as a medicinal plant. Talking about Serajinella, resurrection plant, Aru, Sanjivani Buti. Sanjivani Buti, Sanjivani plant, whatever. Right? Resurrection is something that we have already explained. So during the process of resurrection, what happens to this particular Serajinella? A particular type of species that grows in dry areas, they will form a ball round structure and they will get uprooted. This formation of a ball like structure, round ball like structure, we have a term for that that is called as cespitose. So cespitose habitat is a resurrection capacity. So this was about the second one. Next we have number three is Phenopsida.
So when we are writing the note, it is quite long, no? but if you go through the points that we have underlined, you will see that there are just only a few points that we have to study from this section. मैम है तो की लिखी से फॉर्म दो पिलिको फाइटा ने की हां हां मैम उनको की लिखी से फॉर्म देन पिलिको फाइटा ने फिबो फिबो विच 
Since funds or the group is considered as the largest group, most advanced group, the best example of stereotypes. So we have to learn a lot of points about funds, right? So you have to know the points which tells about that plant or which categorize that plant as a fund. Adult plant of fund, bully, I mean, kithia form. This should be the characteristics, right? So what is the characteristic? First, they should have big leaf generally, right? Normally. Ferns will have got like big leaves. And another point is, in case of ferns, we do not use the word leaves, but instead we use the word called as frond. The question is, presence of frond is the characteristic of it's the characteristic of fern, right? Ferns or leaves will have like fronds fully come. Next, talking about sarcinate varnation. I think we have talked about this, the coiling that is seen in case of young leaves. If a plant during their younger stage leaves are very coiling, they come out. That is sufficient to categorize that plant as a fern. First characteristic of a fern. Next is the presence of remenda. What is remenda? Certain hair-like structures that is present at the base of a young stem or at the base of a leaf. That is called as remenda. Next is this point. No differentiation between a tropophyll and a sporophyll. What is a tropophyll? What is a sporophyll? A vegetative leaf and a reproductive leaf. We have seen certain cases where there is a marked difference between a tropophyll and a sporophyll. Looking at the plant itself, we can say which part is the sporophyll and which part is the tropophyll. But in case of ferns, you cannot differentiate between a tropophyll and a sporophyll. At the younger stage, it will be talked about it as a Tropophyll. But once it starts getting matured, once it arrives to reproductive time, then what happens? They start developing spores in each and every leaf, and then at that time, the leaves are called as sporophylls. So, adult plants, sporophylls, tropophylls, leaves, leaves tropophyll. Up till which time? Up till the time they do not develop spores. From the onset of spores, they leave pilakokami kibilikom, sporophyllikom. So I think it's understood the meaning, right? So no differentiation between tropophyls and sporophyls, and thus we can conclude that each leaf develops spores at a time of reproduction. Before reproduction, all the leaves will be called as what? Vegetative leaves or tropophyls. Right? Next, we have certain examples of homosporous condition, heterosporous condition, etc. Next is an important point about the enterozoid. What is the enterozoite? The sperm or the male gamete is called as the enterozoite. Why is the word multiflagellate important? Because we have to compare between Selagirilla and fern. Right? Selagirilla and Thamik ki paisilu. The enterozoite are biflagellate. Ferns or ki? Multiflagellate. He took a question ahead. Selagirilla ki thakke maru. Ferns or ki thakke. So these are the points of uh, Teroxida. Next click about some common examples of ferns. Any point that you did not understand? Would you paisilu ya sobe? So as I'm writing the notes, did you give up Bujinu for no please ask?
Maybe he was the one who identified maybe at Our question has been asked about walking fern. It is also called as maiden hair fern. You have to remember the word maiden. Current gymnos fern, so we'll be talking about something called as a maiden hair uh, tree. Right? Gymnos fern is an example of maiden hair tree. It is maiden hair fern. So what is a maiden hair fern? It is called as Adian term. And why is Adian term called as a walking fern? We have talked about this during a morphology class. Walking fern will be here. It's not like this that the fern will keep changing its position. In the Kato no Hoi, the Kyokan is called as walking fern. Because we know the fern, suppose we are talking about ADM fern like this. Whenever the teep reaches the ground, no, Yarpra aquadal plant will be. Ako yar teep to reach Korea, aquadal plant. So this is the way they keep on spreading. And so it looks as if they are walking. And so they are called as walking fern. It is a means of vegetative reproduction. No, you want to have a roots develop for you, not to plant develop for you. So, this was all about classification, and now we have to talk in details about cellar and ferns. So, heading for you, but dry off the risk if this is over. As well, our report question I have, smallest stereophyte, it is also used as a biofertilizer. Give an example of an aquatic fern, right?
So funds, one example of a fund is dry off terrace and we have to talk about it in details. So whenever we talk about a fund, we understand the stem is a rhizome, the leaf is a frond, the young leaf will grow, serginate variation or coiling and remnant would be present. Right. Next is talking about the spores. The spores will be formed inside the sporangium. And where will you see the sporangium? In the ventral side of the leaves. What we understand in the lower side of the leaf, right? So if you talk about a fern, fern corner back side, at the back side, you will see the development of spores, right? So if you talk about this as a fern, no? Just a rock diagram. So key over ventral side or NAK NAK. Spores will like develop forever. Right? So if you look at the front, the back side is the this corner. In equal labor, it's just like a layer of uh, mud. Right? Mati is any key, mati at a layer of pura bhorti hoi zai. Jete hale ta ke nu kalibo, then mati uthi se no? So it look like this. At the young stage, they will remain brown and later they will convert itself into black color and then we know that the spores are getting matured. But the point is, where will you see the spores? On the ventral side on, or on the lower side of the leaf. Next is, we have something called as the inducium. What is the inducium? A covering of the sporangium is called as inducium, right? A black tea, spores, spores will have coat take sporangia without take So sporangia without covering take about. A covering kind of kibuli kosu, inducium. So there would be a leaf, at the back side of the leaf, the sporangia will develop. The sporangia will have a covering. The covering is called as inducium. Inside the sporangia, what is present is the spores. Now, the question is not asked about the inducium. The question has been asked about the presence of false inducium. Sometimes in certain examples like ADN tub, what is ADN tub? Obviously, it's a fern. Normal ferns will have a dry off terrace, hawk, terrace, hawk, able to get a inducium. In the ADN, they have a false covering, and that is what is called as a false inducium. What happens in the leaf of uh, ADN term is, into spores, spores, obviously inside the sporangium, right? Uh, or whatever. Specific place, more piece of mention for him. They do not have the covering, but instead, the edge of the leaf will form a covering. If you're having a flat surface like this, you have the spores growing here. After the spores are formed, the edge of a leaf forms a covering. It is not a separate covering that they have. It is just the edge of a leaf that forms a covering like structure, and so it is called as false inducium. Do you understand the meaning of inducium and false inducium? Inducium, something that is already present in and around the sporangium, right? That is a covering. False inducium, false inducium is also a covering. You know, who forms the covering? The edge of the leaf turns and forms the covering. covering So that's what is called as false inducium. Question, not very important also. False inducium is seen in, or presence of false inducium is seen in. It is seen in case of alien drum.
So talking about the fund, they will develop spores. Spores for develop for was sporangia. The sporangia has to burst in the area called as annulus, and it is that area from where the spores will come out. If the spores come out, they will fall into the ground. They will germinate into the gametophyte that is called as a protella. So what is the shape of the protella? That is again asked. It is a heart shape. structure next is talking about the gametophyte or the protellus it will have the antherium and the archegonium also but where exactly will you find the antherium and where will you find the archegonium why this point is important as we have already said no we'll be talking about this in details in selaginella in also in details right in case of selaginella also we'll see the spores and the spores will germinate into a protellus in this case also the spores are germinated into a protellus as far as the structure is concerned it's almost the same it's a heart shaped structure kinto antherium or archegonium kunchini jagat present they have different names when we draw the diagram it will become more clear right so if you are talking about something like this ekini par rhizoids labo so e jeta kini ami ki buli kom rhizoidal aru iyate ki thakibo antherium buli thakibo aru e upper portion is called as apical portion all of this a diagram a keep and here what you will see is the archegonia so archegonia present in the apical portion antherium present in the rhizoidal area diagram te ta dim te ta hale clear hobo Next point, we have. If we are talking about antherium, antherozoids, we have multi-flagellate. Points are antherozoids. We have what? Multi-flagellate. I think you can write it here, or you can write it here.
what is important the word protellus t shaped heart shaped next talking about the jacket three cell jacket right next important the male gametes spiral and multiflagellate and rest of the things we have already talked about so this is all about the life cycle of gyrocells in the next class we'll be talking about life cycle of selaginella right because we have to talk about two examples in detail i think this is all for today so we'll meet on the next class thank you